allisonwinepromo.com. Support the channel. If you're already a wine drinker, get yourself some extremist altitude wine. You can be an extremist without leaving your grandma's basement. You can be an extremist without voting for Larry or for voting for Larry. You will still be an extremist. And Larry is here to talk to us all about his nomination potentially, mm -hmm. hopefully. I think you're supposed to just say you are going to win. You're supposed to think positively about this kind of stuff. So just say Larry is going to be the vice presidential candidate for well, the Libertarian Party. You know party. what makes me? You know what makes me feel even stronger? They've heard it before. They call it liquid courage. It's called wine. Yes, right. wine. If I had more wine, I'd believe more. So I want I want everyone listening and watching to do me a favor, buy some wine, and then drink it, and then listen to this, and you'll be like, yes. Larry's going to be literally Larry is about to be the galactic overlord. That's about to happen right now. You will believe all of these things. Wine is wonderful. It makes you feel good. Enjoy some wine. If you're going to buy wine, buy from Allison. She's amazing. Buy the wine. Okay. Let's watch this one. This is a Megan Kelly show from, I don't know, six months ago or so talking about the Andrew Cuomo statement. He's such a liar. He has tried to rebrand himself just yes. like his loser brother. As yes. some sort of a moderate now, you know, he's yes. like a fair and balanced Democrat. He's trying to reinvent himself and reinvent Anything. history and his Anything. behavior when it came to the COVID lockdowns. Yeah. And on his podcast, he had CNN's favorite doctor, Leanna Wen, who never saw a lockdown she didn't like or a mask or a vaccine lockdown. mandate. And they're right. going over, you know, how reasonable they both were during sure. the pandemic. And he drops this on it. I lived in New York for the entire pandemic, right? Thank it's you. one of the reasons Thank we you. left and came to Connecticut, his overreach. But I lived in New York. Um, everything, as it turns out, I know you do too, Matt. Um, everything, as it turns Matt's out- That's in Brooklyn. It was all voluntary. None of it was mandatory, okay? All those businesses, they didn't need to close. The schools, that wasn't thanks to him. The mask mandate, not idea suggesture at the top, listen to this in SOT 14. Government had no capacity to enforce any of this. You must wear a mask. Uh, and people wore masks in New York. But if they said, I'm not wearing a mask, there was nothing I could do about it. Uh, you must close your private business. I won't. Well, there was nothing I could really do about it. It was really all voluntary. And it was extraordinary when you think about it, that society uh, acted with that uniformity voluntarily. Okay, okay, oh okay. God. Before you and I, Megyn I Kelly's vomit. heads explode, okay? Before you and Megyn Kelly's heads explode, I just want to say- Mine's already exploded. Because <laughs> I think it's easy to just immediately have that reaction, your head is exploding. But I agree with his last, the last thing he said right there, which is it's extraordinary that people, the amount of people who did comply, it is extraordinary how many people did. And I'm not trying to say that I don't understand. Like I've said before, I lost my job too. I, I get it. I don't want to get locked up in jail. That's like my recurring nightmare. On the other hand, I, I, I still stand by that if that it was extraordinary to see how many people really did just do it. I don't even think necessarily out of fear of being locked out of, of, uh, you know, or locked in jail yes. or, or losing yes. their job or whatever, but, but for social compliance to do the right thing. I had a journalist friend tell me that she was very sick after getting the COVID shot, but she would do it all again, you know, for, I don't know, this ideal of like being an American, you know, which is what the government yes. pushed. They sold it to us, uh, all of it, the masks, the lockdowns, the, the jab, all of it was sold to us as, as like a real, a I'm real helping test of your commitment. You're a real test yes. of your commitment to the yes. American dream. And I, I remember, I remember being in a cab and um, people talking about this. Yeah, I got the jab because I'm going to protect people. Like they thought they were heroes. They were taught that. And you're right. To, uh, I'm going to go do two parts. He is still lying, saying that it was not enforced. That's the part where he's 100% lying. The state government took away licenses, liquor licenses for companies that stayed open. Something with liquor. That was how they would punish them. They would come in and give them fines. When they couldn't do the fine, they would shut them down because of the fine. 
So officially they weren't shutting him down because of COVID, but they were shutting him down because of the fine. But you got the fine because you didn't follow the COVID rules. So number one, he's lying. But number two, you are correct. And I got to tell you, it hurt my heart that you are correct. That so many New Yorkers, a New York City, that if you went back 40 years ago, we were literally the go to hell. I'm walking here in New York City. What's wrong yeah. with you? That's who we were, tough guys. We were tough guys in New York City. That went away. During COVID, we were a bunch of sheep. Literally, and if you live in New York City, you know this, at 7 p.m. every night, the lockdown people would go outside, open their windows, and clap for the heroes who were delivering us food and who were in the hospitals. I'm not joking. We would clap. That is next level Stockholm Syndrome shit. That is next level. You're you're clapping for the guy who's delivering your your jail who's delivering you food in your in your in your in your cell. Thank you for giving me food in my cell. That's what we were doing in New York. New York became absolutely an embarrassment. You are correct. We did become that. So that part's correct. I'm not. You're right. And he's lying. Those two things are both true. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I mean that's why I was kind of saying like they're sort of right. I mean. Th- the, like I said, the the initial conservative reaction is what Megyn Kelly says, which is just like, my head was exploding. I can't believe he's saying this. And granted, I I have those internal monologues too, and not just internal, external. My husband is probably sick and tired of hearing me talk. I'm like, what? where were these people the last three years? Like, what are we living in totally alternate worlds? Especially, you know, Chris Cuomo saying how he, he, he just, nobody wants to talk about, about COVID vaccine issues because- uh, we're all just so scared of political ramifications or it's so political or we're going to, I you know, have, have, I have these- literally six videos from March, 2020 still on my YouTube page now that I'm sure are still being turned down and being a shadow banned sitting right there from, from four years ago. I still have, you talked about it. People talked about it. People we're talking about it now. We're, we're not afraid to talk about it. About it. Yeah. They're just being tuned down. So no one can hear us. Yes, exactly. And, and, and in large part because of the cheerleading of the media organizations like CNN and all the segments that Chris and Andrew did together, which was the weirdest thing ever that, you know, it was really funny. I was reading this article about, about how Chris said that, uh, you know, he, he, when Andrew was going through his whole sex scandal thing and and having to resign as governor, you know, he was never covering that because that would have been unethical, but Yet when COVID was going down, he was covering his brother all the time and his brother got to come right. on and, and was never questioning him about any of his policies. It's like, wait a second, when did the ethics thing start? I must have missed it at some point at CNN. But but yeah, I, I have that reaction too, where I'm sitting back being like, I, I'm, yeah, my head like initially, I, I want to, I want to explode. But on the other hand, I think there's some truth you can pull out of it. And I think actually an important message, which I'm not quite sure either brother meant to share and it, and it particularly in Andrew Cuomo's point, he may be saying it because he's delusional and he doesn't want to believe that he did anything wrong. Okay, that may be the reason that he's saying it. And he might very well be that way. But there's a point made there, which is like, yes, as you said, both things can be true at the same time. Mm-hmm. It can be that there, there was a lot of compliance that if yes. we hadn't seen that history could have been different. It could have been different. We don't know for sure. I'm not, I'm not going to tell another person what to do necessarily to say like, like you should do this and then not be able to pay your rent or whatever. Hey, you got to make your own decision. You got to sleep at night. You got to face God at the end of your life. You make your decisions, but you and God, I get it. On the other hand, I think it's fair to say, you know, we don't know exactly what would have happened if more people had just been like, I refuse. I just refuse. And um, we're, we're over time, like it's going to get harder and harder and harder to refuse without consequences. And each time this happens, it's going to take more and more and more people. It would have taken people 15 years ago to get through something. It's going to take a lot of people the next time something like this happens, because especially the compliance led to legislative successes or executive successes that now have precedent for the rest of us. It's going to take a ridiculous amount of of non-compliance and rebellion to stop but it, this. But here's the problem. It goes back to enforcers not enforcing. I know I said it, but that's what it comes Someone is going to have to turn the CBDC off when you can't get paid anymore and get your check anymore. Someone has to press that button. Someone has to say, I'm sorry, I can't service you because the government has said you're an evil bad guy. Somebody has to say, no, you can't get on this airplane because you're on a list. 
Someone has to say, no, I, you can't go on the subway because you're on a list. Someone has to do that. A person has to somehow do that. And when those people go, no, I'm not doing it. No, that's when things will change. When the enforcers stop enforcing, when one governor, one mayor says, no, I'm not doing this. When, when enough sheriffs go, no, I'm not enforcing it. That's the key. Our pressure has to be on the enforcers because you're right. It's getting harder and harder. And here's the worst part. What if I or you or anyone else, we try to stop the enforcer? That actually makes the enforcers want to fight us more. Mm. That actually that strengthens the enforcers will against us. That strengthens the masses against us. So us fighting the enforcers makes things even worse and more violent. I need the enforcers to stop. If we're going to shame anybody, if we're going to push anybody, if we're going to try to stop anybody, it is to say, Sheriff, why are you doing this? In fact, Sheriff, you do this. I'm not voting for you. You may not enforce any of these things. In fact, if you do, you're get, I'm throwing you out. You're not getting elected. That type of pressure is what we need. When enough, and I, it happened, believe it or not, in Western New York. Western New York happens to be, I know so much about New York because I ran for governor twice, so I, I keep pushing New York. Um, a part of Western New York is in a separate federal district. People don't know that unless you live in New York. It's a separate district. Those district, uh, those sheriffs in that other district all refuse to enforce many Second Amendment laws. And that's why we have much more better Second Amendment in Western New York. They simply said, no, we're not doing it. Nope, sorry, we're not doing it. And it changed. They all did it. So it shifted how our laws are being enforced in New York State. That's what we have to do. There's evidence of this working. It's mayors. It's governors. It's sheriffs, police chiefs, it's those people. We do that, it changes. You know, with all the stress that you're dealing with, listening to Larry and deciding whether or not you're going to comply, your liver really could use some help. <laughs> I need so some help with my liver. I'm with you. <laughs> it's, yeah, get, get liver.com slash Allison, get liverhelp.com. You can't get a liver. I'm not giving away my liver quite yet, but you can get help for your liver at getliverhelp.com. <laughs> Allison. Dude. I do have two kidneys, so I might be considering at some point giving one of those away, but not my liver. I would like to keep my liver. Uh, fatty liver disease is a real problem in the United States because we all eat a bunch of crap. Yes. Um, government yes. says that they really care about food, but they don't actually care, it turns out. Like the food pyramid, Michelle Obama, no. So anyway, if you're somebody who's like me, you're working on your nutrition and uh, you want to give your liver a little bit of a help, this is a great way to do a detox. If you are interested in the ingredients, turmeric, bioprene, which is black pepper, beet, dandelion, milk thistle, artichoke extract, ginger, alfalfa, L-cysteine, glycine, vitamin D3. It's all natural, naturopathic doctor um, formulated, and you can get a deal depending on the amount of bottles. They're also giving away right now for everybody who goes to my specific promo code, getliverhealth.com slash Allison, you get a free bottle of omegas um with its nano nano formulated omega supplement which is also great for your brain good for people who are uh dealing with uh chronic pain chronic fatigue and really if you've ever never done something like this can't hurt you try it it's got a bunch of ingredients i already take turmeric for instance 30 bucks a bottle just for turmeric and yep. you get all of these ingredients for like 40 bucks plus what larry i am with you i take it too and i want to say what people don't realize is you can wait until you start having some problems with your liver and then decide that you want to do some kind of purge. It's way better to have good maintenance always. That's always going to be better for your liver to have good maintenance. So you don't want to have a problem and then fix it. You want to not have the problem. Liver maintenance is important. You do want to worry about it. If you're eating well, I get it. But if you're not eating well or you have times when you can't eat well, a supplement like this is going to help tremendously. Liver does matter. Yes, and even eating well nowadays is very, it, you still get exposed to all kinds of toxic chemicals, 100%. air, water, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, thank you, Larry. Larry's always there to help me promote. I should have him on all the time to help me with my sponsors. My sponsor's probably going to jump ship and go to his show. I had one other thing that I'm going to say, Larry, but I can't remember now, so I think we're just going to end the show. Do you have any final you, thoughts? You, you were going to say that if you want to know more about Larry Sharp's run, you can go to Lars24.com. That's what you were going to say. Let me pull that up. Lars We're going to go to Lars24.com to see what Lars Mapstead is talking about in this Stop 270 plan, which can actually make some actual, um, actually Here make some are. impact this election. See, that's what you were going to say. Do that. That's what I was going to say. Yes, I yeah, meant to. Well, I knew we talked about it at the beginning, but yes, you're right. We need to circle back. Lars 2024, again, Larry Sharp is running for the nomination for vice president 
of the liber le vice presidential nomination candidate for the Libertarian Party. Did I say that correctly? I love it. I love it. Okay. Yeah. I love it. And he's also the best co-host for promoting my sponsors out there. So another reason. <laughs> Larry, what happens if you become vice president? Are you going to still come on the show? Of course. Allison, there's something I learned. It's going to sound a little crazy, but <clears throat> there's something I learned from the lockdowns and from failures and all the things that happened in my life. Most people are going to forget about you. Most people are fair weather friends. Most people won't support you when you're down. When I was doing well, when I had won the, uh, when, when I had, when I had gotten ballot access in 2018, when I was raising tons of money, when I was getting people elected in 2019, everybody was my friend. When I was on Joe Rogan, when I was on Glenn Beck, everybody was my bestie. I, everybody was my bestie, all my best friends. 2022, when I got my ass kicked, I found out who was my friends. And one of those people were you. So, Aww. yes. That's yes. sweet. Well, to wrap up the show, Larry, this is so true. Al Smart will just come. Uh, people complied, grumpy old man said, because the mainstream media did such a good job of scaring everyone and lying to everyone. And uh, Chris Cuomo says he's he's never going to give up the fight to the truth about yep. what happened to people due to the COVID vaccine <laughs> and all that, despite the fact that the reason that all of that happened, not the only reason, but one of the main reasons that that we saw what we saw over the last few years was because of the terrible information we got from the mainstream news, the pressure they put on the average American to feel like they were, yeah, they, they just weren't a patriot and were yep. borderline delusional if they didn't comply, 100%. frankly. Um, and uh, there was no better example of that than CNN, at which Chris Cuomo worked. So Absolutely. I don't know. I don't think he would be talking about it. Maybe it's unfair to say this is my opinion, but I don't think he would be talking about it if he wasn't working for a place or seeing that there would be some kind of social or financial advantage to discussing it in his current place. There must be some, you know, he, if, if there's I, I got to tell you what I think it is. <clears throat> I'll give you my two cents. I don't know Final this, but this is what I believe. I believe that he now recognizes that it affected him personally. He now has to come out and talk about it and will have to come out eventually. So he's now taking this side so he can talk about it. Imagine if he had come out and just said, well, this happened, uh, 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 doesn't work. So he has now decided that now he's the champion for everybody now. That's what I think. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I, I think he probably believes that. That's the problem with all this is that a lot of people yeah, really, good believe, point. really believe what good they're point. saying. But um, anyway, okay. Well, thanks, Larry Sharp. Always appreciate having you on. Thanks, everybody who's on the editorial board, sports the sponsors, sports my work. Sends me mail. See you next time.